Hey everybody, it's Iron Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this weekend. Uh, yesterday was kind of busy for me, so unfortunately I wasn't able to get on. But we are going to be here when it matters the most because the winter weather and the severe weather are picking up as we speak. We have the activity that we've been anticipating over here towards Denver, and then this storm system that's eventually going to start affecting the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas are coming into play. And then also now, and this is a pretty new feature here, is this severe weather threat that we've gotten over here towards Austin, Abilene, Colleen, San Angelo, San Antonio, that is mainly entailing a hail threat, but there is also a 2% tornado threat and a 5% wind threat with this. This could potentially uptrend too. So we're going to be keeping an extra close eye on this. We're actually uh, going to do a little something that we haven't done in a while. We did this a lot during the summer, a little hail stream later this evening that's when the storms are expected to be at their peak today across this region then there are multiple days of severe weather ahead as well sunday and monday are slight risk entailing mainly wind and tornado threats while also maintaining a 15 percent hail threat for tomorrow so a lot we're going to be keeping track of so busy times ahead for the channel here it's a busy little stint so Make sure that you guys are hitting that like button. Don't miss anything. And we're going to get into the details now. So, oops, I didn't mean to click Monday. I meant to click Sunday. So here are two uh, slight risk for both tomorrow and Monday here. And here is the threat we've been talking about for a while here is Sunday. I was kind of wondering if Monday was going to end up turning into a slight risk. And it looks like uh, conditions have, in fact, uptrended to such a point where they have issued so these two and particularly tomorrow there is a pretty broad area of a uh, five percent tornado threat and then also a pretty broad uh 15 percent wind area and then here's our hail threat here too nice little stretch between uh parts of west central alabama stretching all the way towards lufkin texas these storms are probably going to start a little bit early to mid afternoon and then last throughout the day so could be a lot of coverage here on this end might not be a video just one long stream depending on how things play out. We'll get a little bit more insight on that as we go into the model data, but all hazards possible tomorrow. And while I think the hail threat will uh, kind of downtrend for Monday, I do think that given the uh, kinematics with the setup that we have, we still could probably see a few more uh, threats of uh, damaging winds and tornadoes, especially towards uh, the panhandle of Florida this time, not the peninsula as much but also uh, southern Georgia and uh, southeastern Alabama here. So if you're over towards Dothan Enterprise, you need to be on the lookout. And this slight risk does include the Atlanta metro area here too. So make sure you're being on guard. If you happen to be in any of these areas here, let's not forget also Augusta and Savannah, Brunswick and St. Simmons you need to be on the lookout as well. Let's go ahead and get into the model data now. And I don't know why we've gone to this map here, but if we go to the 500 millibar range here. You can kind of see some of the evidence of these uh, storm systems coming in now. So here's our first storm system. This is what's going to bring that winter weather in. It gets a lot more stout as we go through uh, Sunday morning in particular. This low really starts to uh, ramp up here. And also, this is what's going to become the uh, key component to that severe weather threat. One thing that might inhibit Sunday just a little bit could be this little area right here where we could be seeing maybe a little bit of a confluence band to get started. But eventually, I do see those storms starting to pop off over here. I can kind of see the evidence with these little um, gaps right here. And I can see maybe a little bit of a short wave beginning to uh, show up somewhere around here it's not an impressive one it really ramps up later into the evening which is when I think peak time for the threat will be this mainly looks like it's going to be a linear type of deal to start out with and then eventually we start to see some extra action as we go from Sunday night into Monday I do think that Monday's threat will be a little bit earlier in the day but can't we could see maybe a secondary round as that front passes through towards the back half of the morning here maybe the afternoon possibly too but I don't expect too much out of that could see a few rampant showers left over but that's about it 
then we shift our attention back towards the uh, winter weather threat here and you can actually see that we have winter storm indexes of uh, minor to um, basic minimal impacts at the moment but I do think that there could be a couple of upgrades here for some of these areas especially towards the Ohio Valley because here's our storm system here as it wraps around and we're at the end of this model run period but we're anticipating this uh, continuing to ramp up drink uh, dragging in more cold air and then eventually dropping some notable amounts of snow over here towards Iowa Indiana and Ohio here and then eventually working its way to the northeast throughout the start of next week so given the fact that we're looking at severe weather potential over the next three days we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the low-level jet here in particular so the thing that we're gonna be looking for here is just the uh, change in uh, wind direction here you can see the evidence already here just with that uh, Gulf of Mexico moisture flow it's not gonna be quite as impressive today of course storm system just kind of out of position there so kinematics or low level kinematics aren't going to be incredible not to say that there's a zero percent chance but it's not going to be anywhere near as prevalent as tomorrow i would anticipate tomorrow being the big day in general out of all three days so as that low comes in you can see the uh you can see that our wind barbs here are pushing in a more northerly north north northeasterly direction i would say and then here is that uh, point of interest right here. I think Louisiana is really going to be the hot spot. And maybe parts of western or south, what central, maybe west central uh, Mississippi here as well. So we're going to be watching that area throughout the day for the threat of severe weather. Like I said, all hazards seem like they're on the table here. And then we do see a little area pop up over here towards south Georgia and parts of southern Alabama, the Florida Panhandle that could be of interest in regards to that severe weather threat for Monday. Of course, we'll be uh, making an update video on that maybe tomorrow. But like I said, it's, it's going to be an active three days across the board here. And once this clears out, then we're going to be shifting over to maybe more of a winter mode here. So like I said, a lot of coverage coming our way here. So if we uh, switch back over we're gonna actually go ahead and see how this coincides with our temperatures here so with the ridge that I've been talking about for the last few days for like really about the last week I would say we're already starting out pretty warm here across the southeast you can see kind of where the cold front is where we have those 20s and 30s over here out west it's still pretty cold right now and plenty of winter weather to go around like I said over towards Denver and areas around the Rockies in particular are where we're going to see the most precipitation. However, like I said, with this ridge here, we can see the uh, southeast really starting to warm up here, getting into the 60s. Over towards the Gulf Coast, towards New Orleans, we're getting some 70s here, even some mid-70s here from the looks of it as well. So stage looks like it's setting up uh, pretty nicely for severe weather. Here's that, uh, of course, the temperature's dropping with night, but if we go into the early part of the day, like I said, towards uh, South New Orleans right here, in particular, South uh, Louisiana in particular, that's going to be the point of interest. And then, of course, eventually we'll see, we'll see uh, this push off to the east here, particularly towards Southern Alabama, where we could even see some 70s by, let's say, Monday afternoon, possibly even. So, like I said, there's a potential for maybe a couple of rounds. I think the uh, first round could be more notable. But, of course, I can't look too, too far into Monday at the moment because this is as far as this model will let me look as 60 hours. So, like I said, we'll be making a follow-up video on this tomorrow. So, another thing that we'll be doing is taking a look at the dew points. And, really, you kind of saw the spoiler with the low-level jet. With those wind barbs pushing in that direction at the low levels, it's going to be bringing in plenty of moisture here so with this little torrent of moisture here and it would not surprise me if we did maybe see a couple of areas where we could see a sneaky little 70 degree dew point and that could make a big difference in the intensity of these storms the higher the dew points usually will lead to a greater amount of instability and usually will a lot for a chance of a stronger storm possibly so we'll have to keep an eye on things but Still, we're getting those dew points into the mid-60s here. 
more than sufficient enough for severe weather and i'm actually really eager to see what this latest run has as far as instability is concerned here but this is what we're looking at as we go from sunday into monday and that moisture advection is really impressive for this time of year in particular so like i said i'm concerned about a uh, lengthy threat for monday too not quite as uh, certain as to how significant those impacts will be as of yet but like i said we'll have a follow-up for that one so we'll shift over to severe weather here on the left screen and we'll go ahead and take a look at our instability here this is measured in joules per kilogram often referred to as cape and we can actually see some uh, pretty impressive values here even with today's setup with a hail threat that's not uncommon in fact it's something that i would honestly expect this does have a marginal tornado threat here but with the lapse rates being as steep as they are based off the skew t i definitely see the uh, reasoning for the hail threat especially with this little dry slide over here towards the mid levels of the atmosphere but like i said the main thing that's going to limit the potential for a tornado is going to be the lack of kinematics because we're kind of because we have that uh, storm system that's generating the lift needed lagging back just a little bit too much so as we go through the day tomorrow here's where we start to see that little surge of instability right here and it's not like you need a lot a thousand joules per kilogram is more than enough for severe weather and here you go with that little bit of increase it's not like it's a magnanimous one we do have an increased chance of tornadoes a little bit higher confidence with that there really good lift index here this is uh, showing the uh, lift index temperature for Celsius right here. Usually you would look for something around the lines of negative four at a minimum. Once you get below negative seven, you're talking, you might be talking business there. But also uh, make note of this right here on the uh, SQT, the significant hail parameter index parameter being at a two. So that's pretty notable and uh, pretty impressive. For, like I said, pretty impressive for this time of year for it to be that far to the east here really good lapse rates as well so this could be a pretty dangerous sounding here so like i said louisiana and uh, maybe east texas could be a, a big point of interest throughout the day here so like i said gonna be a lot of uh it's gonna be a pretty long time frame here where we're gonna be covering that severe threat here and as we continue to go forward eventually we see that instability build off to the southeast here and this interesting to make note of because i saw two different time frames where we could see storms but it looks like if we can get the atmosphere to recover over here, maybe even northern Alabama or north central Alabama, northern Georgia maybe could get into the action here too. Could maybe be a little bit more along the lines of a colder core type setup. And actually, and, uh, actually no, that's not the case. It looks like it, the atmosphere does recover because we're seeing temperatures into the 60s here. Usually the closer that you are to that low, sometimes you'll end up seeing the uh, temperatures really kind of stay towards the 50s, the 60s. A lot of this is really going to depend on um, whether the rain will really cool off the uh, atmosphere over here towards this region. But with that in mind here, it does look like we could have a line of storms forming here and just enough kinematics to maybe see an embedded cell that could potentially create a spin up here. So like I said, Plenty of moving parts to this. Definitely uh, need to be keeping an extra close eye over here if you're over towards Atlanta's and areas even to the north right now. It's a marginal risk right there. It could change, but we'll have a we'll have a, a pretty lengthy time frame between uh, Sunday and Monday here to uh, look for severe weather here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at what the models will look like in regards to our radar coverage. This is going to be over the course of the next three days. This is what we're, this is about what we're looking at right now. This is what we were looking at on uh, Radar Omega here. And then, of course, as time goes on, as we go later into the evening, this is when we probably will see that peak hail threat. Some of these cells to the south are going to be probably a point of interest, if anything. And then eventually we could see that weather begin to fire off a little bit further to the east here but the, really the big event like i said is going to start more so towards sunday afternoon see a little bit of a confluence band beginning to form here and then after that this is where we start to see some of those uh embedded cells try to develop here and definitely kind of tries to take character of a squall line at first but i do see a eventual maybe breakdown into a couple of discrete cells here and there 
and it really becomes more apparent as we get later into the evening we can get that instability to hold here we could have some considerable problems here also make note of the northeasterly motion that we'll have here due to that low level influence then here's when we start to see the weather begin to pick up toward the southeast here's that first round and then here's the interesting thing that i'm picking up on here we do see a few gaps here and then this could a lot for some bigger storms to fire later in the afternoon and then maybe another round to pop up here as well so we could be dealing with a multi-round threat of severe weather monday so the first time i've really gotten a good look at monday here to this degree and honestly i'm somewhat impressed by this and also a little concerned as well so like i said anywhere in alabama and uh central alabama maybe even northern georgia which isn't really being talked about as much you might want to be on the lookout again as well we already know about central and southern georgia as well as the florida panhandle so like i said we need to be on our p's and q's here so a couple other things that we'll go ahead and look at before we get out of here are going to be the rainfall totals and then of course snowfall and also just a look at everything across the board to kind of hammer down that final timing here so not really a surprise here that we're going to see a significant amount of rainfall over the next few days here flood threat is going to probably be great it's just north of our uh, highest potential for severe weather those storms are going to be doing a lot of training once again and i think towards southern arkansas is going to be a point of interest as well as maybe tennessee as well we could potentially see three inches plus over the next few days there and then this could even stretch all the way into parts of North Carolina here towards the mountains. In those valleys, we could see potential for some significant rainfall, maybe even some accumulation there. And then, of course, over here, we're going to be watching more for snow off to the west. So we'll go ahead and actually cover that with on this one here, on this uh, screen right here. We'll go ahead and go all the way up to 60 hours out. And impressive thing to make note of here and i'm actually going to go ahead and do a model comparison loop here is that we actually get a pretty healthy dosing in fact a pretty significant dosing of snow over here towards the texas panhandle in particular of course this is going to vary from some of the other models that we have here but um pretty uh significant amounts of snow even stretching into the uh midwest here where we could be looking at some areas over towards let's say ozark missouri maybe could get about three to five inches possibly of course the uh highest totals are going to be more over here towards the the mountains over here towards the uh, northwest here mainly towards washington and idaho but it's a pretty impressive amount of snow for a region that doesn't always see a significant amount here just based off of this model alone but if we go over to the british model still not looking as far out to the east at this point just yet some of these storms some of these uh, models have the storm system uh, kind of lagging back a little bit and having a little bit of struggle with moisture euro is actually one of those there but still i'm seeing the notable bullseye maybe over towards uh, amarillo maybe some areas to the south of there but if we compare that to the national weather service blend of models we'll just go ahead and do that real quick we're seeing a little bit different of a picture there this still we're still seeing a smaller pocket albeit but right around amarillo actually maybe six to eight inches so this could be a pretty significant snowstorm for these guys here the signal over here towards these regions i think it's going to really stretch more so into monday than anything else so we'll get into that one tomorrow of course but beyond that point though We'll go ahead and take a look at what the radar could look like here from the screen to the right and we'll wrap this one up so this is the timing and if i call out your area you definitely want to be paying attention so here's our first round this is going to be over towards san diego here we'll probably be looking at an increase in storm activity as we get towards let's say maybe 21 22 z which would be just a little bit after lunchtime if you're over towards uh, Amarillo, maybe Lubbock, we could be seeing that snowfall begin to occur overnight here, particularly around maybe 4 or 5 a.m. possibly towards this region here. And this, and then probably about maybe 9, 10 o'clock is when we'll start to see some of the heaviest snow with that moisture beginning to come in there. 
After that, here's that confluence band that goes through uh, eastern Texas. And then here is where the storms begin to fire, probably right after lunchtime over here as well. And then we'll see continuous activity from that point onward as it eventually races off to the east. Here's that first round of rain for southern Georgia and then maybe towards northern Georgia. But what concerns me most is, like I said before, is seeing that clearing here. If we can get that increase in stability of uh, instability here, especially if we get periods of potential sunshine. It's not like it would take a lot, but any extra daytime heating here will definitely amplify this situation here, of course. So we're going to have to keep an extra close eye on it. Another big round of storms will be coming in just after lunchtime, and then another round will come through right around sunset. And this will end up probably being the conclusion of the storms with the front passing through after that. Also, as we go through Monday into Tuesday, you want to be aware of that wraparound cold air a little further off towards the south and east here. So temperatures are going to flop, flip around after that point, but this big we got to get through this big storm system first here. That being said, I know this was a longer weekend forecast than what we usually do here, but there's been a lot to cover. So I appreciate everyone watching, especially if you watch towards the end. That being said, we're going to get ready for this live stream tonight and then really just all weekend here. That being said, thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment. If you're new around here, definitely consider subscribing. And I will see you very soon. It's been Ty Metalhead Weatherman. Take care.